I am not writing. I'm just sitting back and just letting other people do my work for me. Okay? So today we're going to start talking about complex numbers. You just got done doing um, the Algebra 2 imaginary numbers way of, you know, standard forming, standard forming it and, and all that wonderful thing. Now we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to go to the trig form. So A plus BI is the standard form of a complex number, okay? Which in an ordered pair form would be A comma B. Okay, so that's two different ways right there to write a complex number. Remember that for later, okay? On the coordinate plane, oh, the A part would be the real part of the complex number. And the B would be the imaginary part of the complex number. So if I were to put that onto a coordinate plane, normally we'd have X and Y on our coordinate plane. But now that we're a complex number, we're going to have our real part and our imaginary part. Okay. So we've got that. It's down in the corner. There you go. Okay. So let's talk about, um, side note, this is all on your green uh, note sheet, which we probably should have told you at the start of the video, but you know what? We're two you're minutes smart, in. You're you'll figure it out. Exactly. Get over it. <laughs> All right, so we've got two, two minus five i is our complex number z. So first off, we would want to sketch, or do we want to put it in order? Let's put it in order pair form first. Yeah. So two comma negative five is our complex ordered pair. Now, side note, had you been just doing a quick little sketch of all of these since vectors and polars and all that stuff, you would know kind of where we're going with this stuff right now. So if I graph 2 comma negative 5 on my real and imaginary axis, there's 2 and then down 5 puts me right there. So clearly I am in quadrant number 4. So each and every complex number is a certain distance from the origin. Hmm, what does that look like? That kind of looks like an R value, kind of from our polar. And it's on a directed ray, which means that we need to come up with a theta value for it, too. Okay. So how can we find theta, nope, scroll down, that's it, yep. So how can we find r and theta? Well, if I think back to polars, vectors, am I missing one? I feel like I'm missing one somewhere in there. Parametrics. Parametrics a little bit, yeah. Okay, so if I think back to that, r would be equal to what? Hmm, that looks like the looks like the radius, and then we got a little Pythagorean theorem going on there. Ooh, let's call those A and B. Oh, yeah. Okay, so instead of R being the square root of X squared my, or plus Y squared, now we're going to call R A squared plus B squared. Okay, so that's how we find R, our radius, our distance from the origin to the complex number. And the theta value is everybody's friend. Theta prime is the inverse tangent now of B divided by A. And once again, we drop negative signs. Once again, that gives us a reference angle. So we have to adjust it for each quadrant. I feel like we've done this before. <laughs> Something tells me, Deja vu. yeah, all over again. Okay, so that's how 
how we find it. It is Earth Week, so instead of just recycling, we're going to recycle, recycle the map. Recycle the map. Nice. nice connection. Okay. So, if that is our number, now we want to write that into trig form. So first, we have to find R. That's going to be the square root of A squared. Yep. Yep, draw pictures. We like pictures. You should like pictures too. <coughs> okay. So R is going to be the square root of A squared. So that's 2 squared plus negative 5 squared, which is B squared. Can I just say 5 squared? Sure. Because I know sometimes that little calculator. That little, sometimes they, yeah, they type it in wrong in their calculators. So 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25, so that's the square root of 29. Okay, so the, the complex point is square root of 29 units from the origin. Now we've got to find our theta. Okay. So theta is the reference angle because we're in quadrant number 4 is equal to the inverse tangent of 5 divided by 2. So when I type that on my calculator, I get 68.199 degrees. But that is my reference angle because I'm in quadrant 4. Theta is going to be 360 degrees minus that reference angle. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tap the brakes there. Which gets me 291.8 degrees. Kind of we kind of round. We'll round to the tenths normally. Try and keep it as exact as possible, but if, if it, for, for sure, if it was a unit circle angle, we'd keep everything exact. Okay? So this point, Z, is equal to 2, 2 minus 5i from our original problem, which is also equal to the ordered pair 2 comma negative 5 on the complex plane, which is also equal to the radius, square root of 29, times the quantity, the cosine of 291.8 degrees, plus I times the sine of 291.8 degrees. Okay? So the trig form, so those are the three different ways to write the exact same complex number. Standard form, ordered pair form, and trig form. How can we check it? To know if my standard for my trick form is correct. That's a great question, Mrs. Hill. Well, we could distribute the square root of 29 into the cosine times 200 or cosine of 291.8 degrees. And if we do that, granted we would have probably rounded this, but it should get us something very, very close to two. And then if we distribute it and multiply it by the sine of that, we should get something very, very close to negative 5. That sounds really familiar. R times the cosine of the angle will give me the x. Will it give me the x? And R, R times the sine of the angle will give me the y. Again, recycle math. Alrighty. One more slide. So the three ways to represent a complex number, we have this you should know, this you should write down. Okay. 
So z, we, we call z our complex number. That's just our basic name for it. It's equal to a plus bi, which is the standard form. which is also equal to a comma b, which is the ordered pair form in the complex system. I had to think there for a minute. Complex plane. 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 Plane, plane. that's plane. Yeah. Okay. Which is also equal to... Oh, I'm going to run out of space. Oh, man. No, you got to extend the page down at the bottom. First time using this one. Exactly. <laughs> now she's got a dot. Hold on. Now you got a dot in the middle. Come on. Which is also equal to R times the cosine of theta plus I times the sine of theta, which that is then the trig form of our complex number. Why do we need three different ways to do this? Hey, sometimes you got to have multiple ways to do it, different ways to solve it, and find different things. And, and each tool brings something new to the party. Yep. Yep. Good to have tools in your toolbox, especially when you're doing a new project. So now there are six examples for you to do to put into trig form on the back side of your green note sheet and then when you are done with that please bring them up to your teacher and we will check them to make sure you are on the right track happy trig have a great day